The shirt I'm wearing says, religion is always in the room. I got it earlier this year. It was a fundraiser for the Religion News Writers Association. It's a reminder that even when we're in secular spaces, the values encoded in our religion never leave us. They influence our thinking, and through our thinking, they influence our actions. But how do we make sure that the values that we're embodying, the values that are influencing our thinking and our action, are our pagan and polytheist values, and not the values of a religion we left behind, or the values of the mainstream society? It takes practice. All religions have spiritual practices. If I ask you, what do Buddhists do? Most of you are going to say, well, Buddhists meditate. Now, Buddhists do a lot more than just meditate, but certainly that's their core spiritual practice. Muslims pray five times a day. I grew up Baptist. I was taught, you need to be reading the Bible. What do pagans do? Well, we read and we meditate and we pray, but we do it in our own way. And we have some spiritual practices that are unique to our traditions. But they take practice. Now, I've been writing about spiritual practice for as long as I've been blogging. I've got a workshop on daily spiritual practice for pagans that I've done at conventions and conferences and pagan pride days and retreats for 12 or 13 years. There are sections on spiritual practice and practice in both of my books. I thought I had said everything I needed to say about spiritual practice. But in the post-class survey, after the last online class, the most frequently requested subject for uh, a future class was prayer, meditation, devotion, energy work, all the kinds of things that fall under pagan spiritual practice. What we're going to cover in this class is certainly not the only way to do spiritual practice. But it's the way I've been doing spiritual practice for 20 years. It's been very helpful to me. It's given me a foundation for my spiritual work, my religious work, my magical work. It's been of immense benefit to me over the last year and a half of disruption that we've experienced in our worlds. And so now I am happy to present the fifth online class from Under the Ancient Oaks, Pagan Spiritual Practice, a Polytheist Approach. So what are our goals for this course? What do we want to try to accomplish? We want to understand the basics of spiritual practice. We want to explore a variety of spiritual practices. And we want to do that from a pagan and polytheist perspective. Mainly, we want to build a helpful spiritual practice. We want to come out of this class with everyone understanding what you can do on a regular basis that keeps you connected to those values that are so important to you. If you've taken one of my courses before, you know they all look kind of alike. Um, there's going to be some changes in this class. The biggest change is there's going to be more shorter modules. The previous classes have been either six or seven modules. It's going to be 11 modules to this course, plus this module zero. Most of the last few courses have been running 50 to 60 minutes per module. This one, these ones I think are going to run more in the 20 to 30 minute range. Some of them may be a little longer, some of them may be a little shorter, um, but mainly they're going to be a lot shorter than the previous ones. For something like this, I think it's helpful to take it in smaller bites. 
um, take one thing and cover it in the video and then go do the homework and then start incorporating it into your practice and get comfortable with it and then move on to the next thing. So I just, something like this, I just think it will be easier if we take it in, in smaller bites. I'm going to use more video this time. Now, it's still going to mainly be this, a PowerPoint driven class, but I'm going to, um, I'm going to try to work in more video, particularly on the practices where I can demonstrate something because um, um, so much of what I did in my learned in my spiritual practice, I learned by watching other people. And you don't get that from a book and you only get it partially from listening to people talk about it. Um, a video isn't the same as being there in person, but but it can help. So we're going to try to use more video this this time, and I'm not sure exactly how much, but um, um, I'm planning on more. Uh, there will be no homework reviews this time. For the first four classes, only about a quarter of the students have actually turned in homework. And out of those, the vast majority of them, I've my review has been one or two lines that basically said, yeah, you got this, this is good. I don't know how helpful that is. I don't know if it's a good use of your time or, or my time. So there's still gonna be homework because you need to be putting this stuff into practice if it's gonna be gonna benefit you. But how do I evaluate your prayer? Um, and even if your prayer is, is completely off in left field, how do I tell you your prayer is not what it really needs to be without ticking you off so bad you, you, you want to quit class? Um, I, I just don't see that individual reviews is going to be helpful for this time. So what we're going to do instead is video Q&As. Um, not after every class, but um, uh, after certain classes, it's going to be an opportunity for you to submit a question and then I will sit in front of the camera and answer them. And if I need to do a demonstration, I'll do a demonstration. Um, really don't know what this is going to look like because I haven't done it before, but I know some other teachers who do video Q and A's and they, it's worked well for them. And, and I think it's worth trying out for, for this class. Let's get into the syllabus. Let's get into what we're going to cover. This is the syllabus module, the free introduction. Module one is polytheist foundations. Um, this is the, the concept of many gods who are worthy of our worship and uh, the concept of animism and the concept of ancestor veneration and of operative magic and all those things that go into making a pagan and polytheist worldview. Um, we're going to cover all these. If you've taken my other classes, this will probably be a review for you. Um, I encourage you not to skip it uh, because I'll be presenting the things that we need to cover for what's coming up later in the class. But this is this is the foundation, and because we're doing this, um, anybody can take this class. Then we get into the details altars and shrines and how they're different and how you can build one and what you can do with it. Prayer. Prayer is the core of my personal practice. And it doesn't have to be the core of your practice, but it may be. And I'm, I'm going to suggest that it should be a part of your practice. Meditation. Our Buddhist friends teach mindfulness meditation and our Zen friends teach uh, uh, you know, emptying the mind. And uh, this isn't that. This is a different type of meditation. Um, certainly the Buddhist meditation has value, but, um, but it's not what we do as pagans. We do something slightly different, or at least I do something slightly different. Offerings and how we make offerings and why we make offerings and, and the benefits that come from them. Reading and study, whether this is the the academic style study where you're reading history and anthropology and, and religion, 
and also the devotional readings where you can you can read the hymns and poems and and works of praise that people have written to various deities relationships with the natural world. I'm a druid. I love nature. Um, there is great value in following the sun throughout the course of a year, uh, following the moon throughout the course of a month, and also throughout the course of a year. Um, being in community with the spirits of the land where you live. This is um, if prayer is my number one spiritual practice, this is number 1A. Um, very important to me, and, and, and I hope it will come, become important to you. Grounding and energy work. So many times I see people talk about a, a, a spiritual problem, especially a magical problem they're having, and somebody will say, well, first thing you need to do is ground and center. And they're like, what does that mean? One of those things we assume that everybody knows how to do it, but everybody doesn't know how to do it. Um, there are different ways to do this. This is how I've learned how to do it. And so it's what I'm going to teach. Worship and liturgy, why it's important to, to, to honor our gods and ancestors and the ritual elements that go into forming and maintaining those relationships. Building a liturgical calendar. Um, certainly, we have the eightfold wheel of the year, and if you are most varieties of modern pagan, you you either follow that or you're at least familiar with it. It's not the only way. Some traditions have their own calendars, but um, uh, the the liturgical calendar is more than just the wheel of the year. And we're going to talk about what all can go onto your liturgical calendar. And then the last module is commitment, persistence, and will. How we put together a spiritual practice and do it day after day, week after week, year after year, and how we build on that and the benefits that come from building on this. So who should participate? Well, the class is intended for pagans and polytheists and witches and pretty much anybody who falls under the big tent of paganism. But it's also uh, for anybody who's interested in building a deeper spiritual practice, whatever your religious and spiritual persuasion may be. There are no prerequisites. Uh, you don't have to be a pagan to take the class. You don't have to be a polytheist. You don't, uh, you don't have to have taken any of the other classes. Um, you, this looks interesting to you dive right in. However, this class is going to be a prerequisite for the next class. This class is Introduction to Spiritual Practice. The next one is going to be Intermediate Spiritual Practice. Um, when I laid out this class, the, the list was way too long, even by shortening the modules. And there was a pretty clear line between the, the things I consider to be foundational and essential and then the deeper practices um, that may not interest everybody, um, but that if you are interested in it, you need a good foundation. This builds that foundation. It also means that when we start course six, we don't have to go back and do a foundational module or two or three, as I've done with some classes. Um, so yeah, if you want, think you might want to take intermediate spiritual practice, definitely take this class because it will be a, a prerequisite. Class six will be early next year, probably late January, early February. We'll see how things go. Who should not participate in this class? Well, as always, anybody wanting to proselytize for anything is not welcome in this class. Um, we have Christian, we've had Christians in all the classes. I expect there will be a Christian or two in this class. Um, they participate respectfully and they are respectful of other, uh, other viewpoints and they are quite welcome in this class. Um, but if you want to proselytize for fundamentalist Christianity or conservative Catholicism or or for aggressive atheism, uh, go somewhere else. This isn't for you. 
if you're expecting universal religion, this you're probably going to be disappointed in this class. This is a pagan class presented from a polytheist perspective. Um, deep down, it's not all the same. Now, if you believe that deep down it's all the same, um, you're still welcome to take the class, but um, you may be disappointed. And, and you're going to have to do your own translation from, uh, from my pagan polytheist perspective to yours. Course format. Again, if you've taken classes with me before, you're, this, this will be familiar. We have weekly videos. Um, I, typically, they're released early on Thursday morning. They are on demand. Um, you watch the videos, do the exercises, do the homework when you're ready. There are so many teachers who teach classes that I would love to take, but they're always at a time that doesn't work for me. So uh, I've made my own classes on demand. Um, take them when you, you want. Uh, the good news is they're here. Um, you want to come back and review them in six months? Your password will still work. Um, come in, take the class, uh, go through the material again. Uh, if this is 2024, 2025, and you're just now finding this and you really want to take it, uh, come on in. If it's still here, you can still take the class. There will be homework. Again, it's practice. You got to practice if you're going to uh, if you're going to get anything with class. It's not enough just to listen and try to absorb it. You got to put it into practice. But as previously noted, there will be no homework reviews this time. There will be five video Q and A's, and you are encouraged to submit questions. and And we'll see how that goes. We're going to kind of make it up as we go and. Um, We'll see how long they are, what what form they take, but um, yeah, we're going to do video Q and A's this time. There are no required books. There is no required reading. I'm not going to say here read chapter one out of the Path of Paganism, um, but uh, there are some books you may want. Uh, beginning with the Path of Paganism, my first book. If you haven't taken any of my classes before, you haven't read the book. Um, this would give you a good foundation for the, the kind of things we're going to be talking about that goes beyond what we're going to cover in Module 1. Second book, Paganism in Depth, um, a polytheist approach, uh, covers some of this stuff in more, uh, more, more detail. I thought about making this a textbook for this class, but, you know, we already did Course 1 as the, the deeper dive into this book and you know i'm not I, you know, I that wrote that book that book came out in 2019 i wrote most of it in 20 2016 2017 i've learned some more things and so um while that book is still certainly still very good um i got more stuff to talk about so not a textbook but uh, i do highly recommend it when we get to the section on devotional reading, you may want one or more of the devotional anthologies. Uh, these just happen to be four that I have from left to right. They are anthologies to Poseidon, to Hecate, to the Morrigan, and to the Horned God. There are many others. Um, do some Googling. Um, there's probably one on, uh, if, if, you're, if you're a follower of a major, uh, major deity. I don't like that. If you're a follower of one of the more popular deities, how's that? Um, there is probably a devotional anthology for them. Um, if there's not, maybe you need to put one together. Not required, but you may find this helpful when we get into that section. And then when we come to the grounding and energy work, um, Particularly if you're, you're, you've not done this before, highly, highly recommend Matt Oren's Psychic Witch. Um, I think every pagan in the world has this book by now. It's just the sales for this thing have been amazing. But uh, but if you don't have it, if you aren't familiar with uh, with, with, with energy work, um, I strongly recommend it. It is it's just the best introduction there is for it. But again, none of them are required reading. 
There is a private Facebook group. It's a secret group. Only members can find the group, see what's in it and what they post. Don't go looking for it. You can't find it. Um, if you sign up for the class, want to be a part of the Facebook group, send me an email. Tell me what name you use on Facebook. I will send you an invitation. It's a good place to post questions, particularly if you're either you're, um, you didn't like the answer I gave you or you want another opinion or, um, you know, it's just something you want to. Uh, you, you want to talk about the good place to uh, to ask questions. There are participants in this class and in this Facebook group who know as much about this stuff as I do. So um, there's lots of resources that you can draw on if you have questions. Conversations among classmates. It's for all UTO class participants. So the um, people from the first four classes are there. It's not just for this class. We also have a Discord server. A um, couple folks set that up back during the Operative Magic class. Uh, I don't do much on, on the Discord, but uh, it's there if you want to use it. Participation in all of this is completely voluntary. Uh, if you don't want to be on Facebook, don't want to be on Discord, you're not gonna uh, you're not gonna miss out anything critical by not being there. The cost. I'm going to hold the cost the same as the other classes, $50 for the entire course. Um, I'm going to put a lot more into this class than I did to the the, the, the first four classes, but um, um, I really want as many people to take this class as possible. And um, yeah, I don't promise I'm going to hold that 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 cost going forward, but but for this one, it's fifty dollars for the class. I prefer PayPal. The vast majority of you use PayPal. The two or three who don't give me a credit card number, I run through PayPal because it's the only credit card processor I have. So um, yeah, a limited number of scholarships are available. If you are having financial difficulties, just ask for a scholarship. Um, I want people to take the class and, you know, our economic situation is a lot better than it was this time last year, but um, the recovery has not been even and, you know, plus people just have ups and downs in life. So um, um, if you're in a bad place, uh, ask for a scholarship. The more paid registrations and sponsorships I get, the more scholarships I can offer. Um, for the last class, the participants were extremely generous. Uh, several people said, hey, I'd like to sponsor another student, or in some cases, I'd like to sponsor two or three students. Um, had a couple people who said, you know, I can't sponsor a whole student, but I'd like to sponsor a half of one. Anything that you can contribute toward a sponsorship helps me accept more scholarships and um, um, increases the number of people who can, can participate in the class. Deadline for scholarship application is September 4th. Um, I don't need the details. Uh, you don't have to justify your need. You just have to say, I need a scholarship and I will um, uh, put your application on file. Our schedule, August 24th is the day that uh, Module Zero, what you're watching now, is released. Registration opens. So yeah, go ahead and start registering now. Scholarship applications are accepted. September 4th is a deadline for scholarship applications. So um, midnight my time, though actually it's whatever time I wake up the next morning. Um, that's the application deadline application for scholarships. By September 6, I will notify all of the applicants whether you you're, were able to fund your scholarship or not. Thursday, September 9th is when Module 1 becomes available. Again, typically released early on, um, um, early on Thursday mornings. Uh, there will be an email that goes out that's saying, hey, it's now ready, go go watch it. And we will continue on a weekly cadence for 11 weeks. 
last module released on November 18th. Um, that's the Thursday before Thanksgiving, the following Thursday. If you want to know why we're starting on September 9th, well, I backed into that date because I wanted to finish before Thanksgiving. So, um, yeah, if I put module 11 on November 18th and then back up 11 weeks, we start on September 9th. Sometime after that, in early December, we'll do the um, um, we will do the uh, post-class survey. So you can give me your feedback about what went well, what went not so well, and what you'd like to see in future classes. Questions? Have any questions? Que whether there are questions that are you have right now when you're trying to decide if you want to sign up for the class or not, or if you're into the class and something comes up along the way, ask and I'll do my best to answer. Response format will vary. Um, hoping to put as many of them in the video Q&A as I can. If it's something deeply personal, I'll, certainly I'll answer by email. I may suggest that you um, put it in the Facebook group, particularly if it's something that uh, where I kind of out of my area of expertise, um, you know, throw it out in the Facebook group, see what everybody else has to say. Lots of smart people in this class. And you know, if it's a deep question, I may turn it into a blog post. Um, always looking for writing prompts, and if you uh, your question is something that could be general, generally applicable, I'm, I'm, uh, it may show up on the blog. And I'm always available to answer class-related questions. So again, if you're taking this class in 2024, and you know obviously you're too late to get in on the video Q and A's, but uh, if the class is still up and I'm still around, and and I expect to be, um, then um, yeah, ask the question and I'll do my best to answer. I don't do casual conversation. Don't send me articles and say, hey, read this and tell me what you think. Do not send me videos and tell me to watch them. Um, if you send me a video there, I can almost guarantee you that I won't watch it. Um, it's nothing personal. Just don't like to do things like that. And, and so I don't. Um, so don't do casual conversation. But if you have a question that relates to the class and the material, uh, by all means ask and I will do my best to answer. Signing up, you've taken classes with me before, you are you know what you're doing now. The easiest way is simply to send me an email, john at undertheancientoaks.com, and say, John, I want to take the spiritual practice class, um, and we'll go from there. You can use the contact form. Uh, really, if you're watching this, it's easier for you and for me if you just, just um, uh, do a straight email. But if you want to use the contact form, I'm not going to turn you down. When you do that, I'll send you a PayPal invoice. When you when it's done, I'll register you for the class. If you've taken classes with me before, uh, all I have to do is just extend your authorization to the new class. If you haven't taken classes with me before, you'll get a WordPress email telling you to go change your password. And once you do that, you will be set. Expect a 24 hour turnaround. Now, if you catch me when I'm at my computer and I'm not busy with anything, um, you may get a five minute turnaround, but uh, don't don't expect that. Um, expect that um, uh, we can get things turned around in, in about a day. But traveling, it may take a little longer. I, I don't plan on traveling any during the main sign up period, but again, if this is um, if this is 2024, you may catch me on vacation. So um, could be longer, but um, for particularly for this first run, expect 24 hours. And that's it. I am really looking forward to this class. This is the core of my paganism. It's you know, paganism isn't something that we believe, it's something we do. And, and this is what we do on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, and so on. Um, this is the foundation for my religion, for my spirituality, for my magic. And 
I'm excited to to show you what what it is that I do and in a depth that I haven't done before. So uh, yeah, go sign up for the class and we will get started on September 9th.